qualitative and quantitative data may look and sound nearly the same, but they have a key difference. Qualitative data is descriptive, but it has no numbers attached to it, and quantitative data uses numbers to measure. In science, we use a lot of quantitative data. In chemistry, we deal with such tiny particles and such large numbers of those particles that we need a way to wrangle those huge numbers. And instead of writing the zeros out each time, we use scientific notation. In scientific notation, you write a coefficient times 10 to some power. Here's how we would rewrite this very small number. You move the decimal to just after the first digit. If the decimal needs to move to the right, it becomes a negative exponent. The number of the exponent is how many spaces the decimal moved. Here's another example. This number is very large. And we need to move the decimal to the left 23 spaces so that there's only one digit in front of the decimal. Scientific notation is much tidier and faster to write. In science, we also make a distinction between accuracy and precision. Even though you may use those words interchangeably in other disciplines, they have different meanings in science. Accuracy and precision allow our experiments to be correct and reproducible. Accuracy is how close to the true value our measurement is, and precision is how close the measurements are to each other. To help illustrate the difference, imagine four dartboards. On the first board, there's high accuracy and high precision. This is what we want our science experiments to be like. On this dartboard, there's high accuracy but low precision. It's not as consistent a result as would be desired. And on this board, there's low accuracy but high precision. The darts hit exactly the same area every time, but it's the wrong area. The last board has low accuracy and low precision. It represents a lab that's full of errors. At the end of an experiment, you can calculate the error compared to an accepted or true value. You take the experimental value, which is what you actually found, and subtract the accepted value, which is the correct value based on reliable resources. You could also calculate percent error, which shows the amount by which the experimental value differs from the accepted value. In this case, you take the absolute value of the error and divide by the accepted value, and then you multiply by 100%. The closer the answer is to zero, the better the accuracy. Let's practice using these. A student has a mass of 53 kilograms, and you guess that it's 49 kilograms. To calculate error, we look at the difference in the two numbers. 49 minus 53 gives us negative 4 kilograms. The negative is significant because it tells us that we're low in our guess. A positive number would have meant a high guess. Now we can use the error to calculate percent error. Take the absolute value of the error, divide by the accepted value, and multiply by 100, and you get 7.5%. And depending on what this measurement was needed for, this might not be a great guess. Sometimes you need really precise measurements and a way to record them. And that's why we use significant figures. Significant figures include all the digits that are known, plus an estimate. There are some rules about figuring out significant figures, or sig figs for short. First, non-zeros are always significant. That's any number other than zero, like one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Zeros between non-zeros are significant, but the leftmost zeros are insignificant. Zeros to the right of a decimal are significant. Placeholder zeros to the right are insignificant, and counted numbers, or exact conversions, have an infinite amount of significant figures. Now that might be a little confusing, so let's use a little trick that I know. If you picture the United States, you know that the Pacific Ocean is on the left, and the Atlantic Ocean is on the right. But here, the P will mean that the decimal is present, and the A will mean that the decimal is absent. So let's start with the number, 2.20. There's a decimal present, so we'll start counting significant figures from the Pacific side. Non-zeros count, and so do the zeros after the decimal. One, two, three. There are three sig figs. Let's try this number, 220. The decimal is absent, so we begin counting from the Atlantic side. That first zero doesn't count. It's a placeholder. And we can't ever start by counting a zero when looking for sig figs. Only the two non-zeros count. We have two sig figs. Now let's try this number, 0 0.00220. The decimal is present, so we'll start counting from the Pacific side. Again, we can't start by counting zeros. Always start when you reach the first non-zero digit, which is the two. We have one, two, three sig figs, because the zero after the decimal point counts. 
An easier way to see that this has three sig figs is to put it into scientific notation. Here, it's much easier to see the three significant figures. When you calculate with significant figures, you need to remember a general rule. A calculated answer cannot be more precise than the least precise measurement from which it was calculated. Basically, you can't pretend you were more precise with a measurement than you actually took. You have to round your answer to the least specific measurement. Let's look at an example for adding significant figures. What is 61.2 meters plus 9.35 meters plus 8.6 meters? The first thing you need to do is line up the decimals. Then you can do the math. Then you need to find the least significant digit. In this case, it's the tenths place. There's where our answer needs to end. Look at the number to the right and round up if it's five or higher, round down if it's four or lower. So in this case, our answer is 79.2 meters. Let's try another problem. You have a 35,000 gallon pool and you take out two gallons. How many gallons are left? This might seem obvious, but the answer may surprise you. Write out the problem, but line up the digits. Then do the math. Now when you look for the least specific digit, it's the thousands place. Those three zeros after the five are not significant. This is a very vague estimate, so we need to round to the nearest thousand. The nine rounds up, and the answer is 35,000 gallons. This might make you stop and say, hey, but I know I took two gallons out. Yes, that's true. But the first number is 35,000 plus or minus 500 gallons. And those measly two gallons aren't enough to change this large estimate. Now let's try multiplication and division. Multiplication and division are a little easier than addition and subtraction because you don't have to line up any decimals. You just do the math. So 7.55 times 0 0.34 equals 2.567 meters. Now we just have to see which number has the least sig figs. And that's the 0 0.34 with just two significant figures. So we round our final answer to two sig figs. You just look at the number next to it and see if you round up or down. In this case, we round up to 2.6 meters. To 2.6 meters. Division is the same way. 4,000 divided by 23.5 is 170.2127. But since 4,000 only has one sig fig, our answer can only have one sig fig. So we round the seven up and we get 200 meters. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.